Hi, my name is Paul Grogan, and welcome to episode 63 of the Gaming Rules Podcast. In this episode, I'm joined by Travis D. Hill from Low Play Account, and we're talking about everything to do with solo games, why Travis likes playing them, and why I personally am not keen on them myself. We've also been joined by a couple of extra special guests during the show. This podcast was created thanks to my Patreon campaign, so if you do enjoy the podcast or any of the other content that I produce, then please consider supporting the show at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And also many thanks to GamesLaw, the UK's largest specialist games retailer at gameslaw.com for also sponsoring the podcast. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. So, I'm here with Travis Hill. Welcome, Travis. Hello! Thanks for having me, Paul. Uh, and we're going to be talking about solo games, Yay. which is a big thing of yours, and yes. since you're here visiting the UK, and in fact you're here at Gaming Rules headquarters right now. Um, so yeah, solo gaming, that's the topic of discussion for this episode. Um, and it's good that you're here because you are a big solo gamer. I am. And you're part of the Low Player Count podcast, which talks about one and two player games. Yep. That's so for those people who don't know, a quick thing about the Low Player Count podcast. Sure thing, yeah. So we are, Low Player Count is a discussion-based podcast about one and two player games. Uh, we talk about things in the board game industry. We talk about larger general topics. Um, but always with a little bit of a slant and a focus to one and two player games. So we're not necessarily a review podcast, um, but we talk about the games that we like and we always try and get it from the perspective of solo and two player gaming all across the spectrum, almost all of the genres. That's yep. it. And I'm not a big solo gamer myself. Because you have friends. Well, it's, it's, no, it's not that. There's, there's, there's other reasons as well. So yeah, so you're going to, in this podcast, hopefully you're going to get you know, different. I'm not saying I don't appreciate solo gaming, it's just I'm not a big solo gamer sure. and I kind of want to analyze the reasons why I don't do that because I think I should. Mm -hmm. Let's start with you though. Why, why, why do you enjoy solo gaming? Oh man, so I, I guess, you know, whenever people talk about board gaming, they always talk about the social component and that's, nice. that's like the number one thing that you hear about is the social component. Okay. Um, I have a fair amount of social anxiety, mm -hmm. right? And so I can, I can come across just fine, but I get in too large of a group on, yeah. um, then it just gets to, ooh, that gets to be a thing. So, so that's one component. Um, but along with that, I discovered, and this kind of happened at the same time, I discovered that games that I was getting interested in were not games that my gaming group enjoyed, okay. right? And so I was kind of going down a different path than the people I was gaming with. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I, had to, I had to figure out a way to play them, and I'm not going to play them all, all the sides all together, so I'm going to go ahead and sit down and just try and play a game individually. Okay. Just play it on my own, right? Um, and then through that, I discovered, you know what, I, I really like this. Um, part of it is almost to a degree like a meditative practice. You know, I have a long, tiring day at work. I'm a, I'm a high school teacher, right? Yep. So I'm with a whole lot of teenagers all day long and then I can come home and after dinner I can I can set up a solo game um, of whatever level I want. It could be something that's quick, that's simple, that's 10, 15, 20 minutes, super random, or I could set up something that's longer that might take me a couple of days to actually play through, okay. play a little bit one night, play a little bit the next night. I can push around some chits on a map or I can or I can roll a bunch of dice or whatever it is. And so for me, it, it works because it works whatever part of my brain I, I feel like working that night, okay. you know, without having to coordinate with people and, hey, you want to come over and play this game? And, yeah. and my game group now, all of us live just far enough away from each other that it's not like a, hey, I'm just going to drive 10 minutes down the street and hang out with you. And right. we all have families and we and a good chunk of us have kids. And yeah. so between all that together, it's just kind of a eh, solo gaming. And part of it is I enjoy it for what it is, but part of it's also just it's, it's what's easy to do. And right. if I want to play a game, I want to play a game, okay. you know. So as you say, you enjoy doing it, but the fact that you're... The, the gamers in your group were going down, or you were going down a different was, direction yeah. uh -huh. for them. Uh -huh. But also, life, people have yeah. kids move, move half an hour away instead sure. of 10 minutes away. Mm -hmm. The solo gaming allows you to do things at your own pace, yep. in your own time. You know, it, it's like when I, I prefer watching films at home than going to the cinema. Oh, sure, yeah. Not only is the cost of getting to the cinema and doing all of that, but it's like, oh, there's a guy in front of me that's really annoying me. Or I really need the toilet. Well, you can't pause it when you're in the cinema. And <laughs> no. I know there's the whole experience of, of going to the cinema. Sure. 
but things like that, I, I, you know, I just sit closer to the TV. That's how I recreate mm -hmm. the cinema here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so so. I, as you say, solo gaming is sort of partly because you enjoy it, but also because... Necessity. Necessity. You weren't yeah. forced into that, but it, the, the only way you were going to be able to play those games is by doing that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and the hard part is that now I'm con I've continued down that path, and since I'm finding more and more of these niche games that they're, they're not playable solo, and so now I'm having the inverse problem of... I'm, I'm still going down this path of finding these weird games that I want to play, but they're all multiplayer. And okay. there's just like no way to play them solo. Right. And so I'm like, okay, now now I have to rebuild some things or or finagle my friends into playing games. Right. Okay. Because <laughs> solo yeah. gaming in the board game industry has becoming more and more popular. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking back 15 years ago, there were probably some solo games out or there were some games that there, could be playable solo. There, there were. It wasn't a big thing. It, there, there were, um, but the majority of them were treated as puzzles or right. or they were like these or they were like these kind of longer war games, okay. right? So I mean you have um you have Ambush from John H. Butterfield, which came out in the eighties. And it's a solo game, but it's like this okay. but it's this really interesting I, I don't want to call it an RPG, it's a story driven right. game, right? So so you're 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 in this war and you're moving your your troops through this area and then you get to this point and then you open up a book and you read paragraph oh, right. three, right? Okay. So so it's story driven, but it's a war game, but it's solo only. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. yeah, they were around then, but your you, you normal board games. But now, now, yeah, it's solo modes everywhere. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Not for every game, but lots and lots of games have either solo variants built in or solo extra packs or official yeah. solo rules. Mm -hmm. it, it is a thing, and I know some publishers look out games. For example, I think I think they only publish a game if there is a solo mode to it. I huh. think that's the case. So anybody who's listening to this who can create... I mean, Uwe Rosenberg, they did a lot of Uwe games. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Um, but I think, for, and, and Tony will correct me on this, but Tony Boydell's Snowdonia, mm -hmm. there was a solo mode for Snowdonia. Yeah. And I think because it was a requirement of being published by Lookout. So I may be giving you completely false information here, which is actually what I've done as a side topic for the last two days. I've been telling Travis <laughs> all sorts of bits of information about UK law that... Turns out to be completely <laughs> rubbish, <laughs> but it's things that I've believed for the last twenty years. So I've been spreading false knowledge, and I may be doing it again. But, that's fine. That's fine. So yeah. So uh, CGE, for example, no solo modes in any of their games at all. And I've spoken to them about it a couple of times, and I've said, "Look, solo gaming's a, a big popular mm -hmm. thing, and should we consider it?" And they're like, "No, no, we're not really into solo gaming. It's not a, really a consideration." Well, and that's it's interesting because you and I were talking just yesterday about about CGE stuff and games that I have played from CGE, and I've played a few games, but if there were solo modes, I would I would play more of them, this, honestly. Yeah. And part and part of it is that is that I don't I don't require a solitaire mode of a game at all. I, I don't nice. I don't need it. Is it nice? Of course it's nice. Okay. But if there isn't a solo mode, there's a chance that it will be that it will be it will be prohibitive for me to actually get that and get that played at the table. Right. Okay. Um I, I we stand very firm on low player count that that there are solitaire games mm -hmm. and there are solitaire modes of games. And that, okay. and that, and that, a solitaire game is a game that either has been designed with sol specifically for solitaire, right. or, or is, has either been designed for, specifically for solitaire, or has been designed with the idea of, hey, we're going to make sure that solitaire is a central component of this game, okay. right? As opposed to what you get a lot with Kickstarters of, we're going to reach fifty-five thousand dollars funded on this, and then we're going to make a solo mode, right. which nine times out of ten they are. Uh, okay. okay, and then the tenth time, it might be really good. Okay, mm -hmm. so have you got some examples of games which do have really good solo modes? Um. Oh gosh, yeah, I think, um, honestly, Viticulture. Okay. Viticulture has a great solo mode, right? So it wasn't designed with solitaire in mind, yeah. and then uh, Morton, Monrad Peterson, he created the Atoma deck okay. for solitaire play, and it's just this deck of like, 15 or 18 cards that depended on different seasons you flip over a card and you have this AI player who just all it does it just blocks Spaces on the board for viticulture and that's it. 
Okay. And it's and it's real simple. And it was a solo mode. It was tacked on yeah. at, for like you know the second or the third edition or whatever it was. Right. Um, but it but it it alters the gameplay enough. But it doesn't feel that it's a hindrance to the game whatsoever. Right. It doesn't feel that because oftentimes with solo modes you have because it wasn't initially built into the actual game, you yep. have to have like an entire subset of rules yeah, yeah, yeah. to go along with it, you know? And so if you have too many rules, that's also a hindrance. Yes. I don't want to sit there and go, oh, I can't I've now got to learn another four pages I, just to play the solo version of the game. Exactly. So, right. I think um, I think v, I think Vital does a great job with his solo rules. Like, like the gallerist, it was just, it was literally like two paragraphs. Yeah. Well, you do this and you do this. Okay, and it still made it difficult to play the gallerist yes. solo and, and to do well, right? Yeah. So solitaire games, games specifically designed for one player. Mm -hmm. Solo mode games, which are games which were not designed to be played one player, but there is a one player mode out there. Sure. And you've said that a lot of those are not actually that good, but some of them are very good. What about games where they have a solo mode where you play two characters? Are they really solo games? I, yeah, yeah, I would still say that that's a solo game. Okay, because there is a train of thought that says, it's kind of false advertising when you say playable from one to four players and you're like, oh, oh yeah. and then you buy it. And the one player mode is you play two players, but you play them both yourself. Sure. It's like, well, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm not. I mean, it, is it deceptive? Yes, okay. it is deceptive. I'm not saying that it's. I mean, as long as there's a little star underneath. Man, I would love that if that was on boxes more. You know, I, whenever you're whenever you're doing a whenever you're doing a solo game and it is you're playing multiple characters. It, it, for me, those are typically adventure style games, right. and that's not necessarily the genre that I play. Yeah, okay. You know, um, but I've played plenty of them, right? Yeah. So you have a game like, um, oh my gosh, what is it? Darkest Night from Victory Point Games, okay. to where regardless of the number of players, you're playing four characters. Right. Period. Okay. There, there's not because the map, the way that the map is set up, yeah, and the way the characters work, you, you have to play four characters, okay. right? You can't play it so you can't play with one character. Now there are some people who absolutely love that. For me, that gets too complicated and convoluted yeah. over time, right? So it's like, um, I love Spirit Island. Yes, Spirit Island has just been knockout stellar. One of my favorite games for this last I year. I was going to bring the conversation around to Spirit Island. Oh, at, uh, oh some good, point. good. Well, I mean, and it's and it's just with Spirit Island, it's very it, it's very similar, right? Mm -hmm. You can play Spirit Island with one with of those one spirit. spirits, but the, but it's very dependent on the spirit that you get. Yeah. Right. So some spirits, you're just you're hosed. There's no way that yeah. you're going to do well. But some spirits, you're actually going to do great. Yeah. Maybe even too well with just one. And so you kind of go, well, I, I need to figure this. Out. How about I play two spirits? Yes. But then once you start playing two spirits in Spirit Island, I, I know some. <laughs> I know. I know some people can do this. Yeah. I have read the forums. I've been on BGG. I've seen people do this. Yeah. But I cannot. Mm -hmm. My my processing power of my brain does not work that well to work. Okay, I gotta, how does this sync together yeah. be, with all these cards and this? Oh, gosh. Exactly. I mean, yeah, Spirit Island, I've, I've done a review of it. I've spoken about it on this podcast mm -hmm. and my monthly video logs many times. And for me, what makes Spirit Island brilliant as a cooperative game is the way that the spirit powers interact with one another. Yes. And if you're playing Spirit Island with one spirit, you're missing out on, for me, what is the best part of the game. And I think it yes. even says in the rule book, I think it says that if you do play with one spirit and that spirit has a particular weak area, because they all have strengths and weaknesses, yes, they do. Yeah. then as you say, you might be completely <laughs> screwed and there's nothing you can do. Exactly. If you're weak on defense, then you're just gonna get... You better, you better be able to attack hard and fast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so Spirit Island's a great example. And what you were saying about not being able to play it two players. So this is one of the reasons why I don't like playing solo games, is you put a game in front of me like that, so Spirit Island with two spirits, um, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. my, my brain yeah. cannot cope. And what I'll do is I'll set it up and I'll be really excited. Yeah. And I'll set it up and I'll start playing through it and I'll, I'll be trying to work it out. And you know, I like, I mean, the reason why we play heavy games is for the, the mental challenge and it's, oh, we've got to make these decisions and this is important and this, that, and the other. But playing a solo game, I actually find that quite stressful. Hmm. I find that it's it, it's the, the stress takes over, and I'm like more concerned with. I know I'm like, am I getting the rules right and everything else? And then I'll be about an hour, an hour and a half in, and I'll realise that I've made a mistake or I'd got something wrong rules wise. Oh sure. And then I'll pack the game up and put it away. <laughs> and, and it's like because it's it's messed up the whole game. Mm -hmm. We so I, there's 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 something to be said in solo gaming about. 
cheating. Right. right. Accidentally um, cheating a, or, 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 or really cheating. Or intentionally, you know, whether you're inadvertently cheating or, or otherwise. Um, and, pe- you know, we, we have these questions and people will ask, you know, it, it's one of those things that people don't want to talk about a whole lot, honestly. Like, okay. how, how often do you cheat whenever, like, like if you have a bad role on something, do you just do, go, do, oh, do you just go oh, oh, okay. and, and uh, no joke, I mean, that happens sometimes, right. you know. I, I think for me, it depends, for me specifically, it depends on what type of game I'm playing. Okay. okay. You know, so, so I mean, if I'm playing, and there, there, are two, there are two trains of thought with this. One of them is if I'm playing a Euro game, if I'm playing, if I'm playing Nussfjord or Feast yeah. or, you know, um, Fields of Arl or something like that, I mean, there's... I'm not rolling a die. It's not a, well, I don't see if this works or not. You know, I mean, it's if I mess up something, then I mess up something, then I go on. Then I try and rectify it and just continue on doing what I'm doing, you know, and just know that, hey, the next time that I play this solo, I got to get that right. Yeah. Okay. Um, but along with that, if I'm if I'm playing a, like a war game, for example, and I'm rolling a die and it's just not going well, and it's you know my fifty eighth one that I've rolled instead of a five or a six, you know, um, there there might be times I'm just like I just want to see if I can I even roll a six. Okay, right. It's just you know I mean I'm not going to necessarily use that as as um, as the actual results, but like let me just see, am I, is right. the die broken? Is my hand mess? What's going on? You know, um, so th- there is this kind of weird thing with solo gaming that you're not held, you're not being held accountable by other people at the table who right. also know the rules. Okay, and so I think that's why, honestly, I think that's why the solo gaming community is as rich as it is, is because because you're all a bunch of cheats. But <laughs> 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 um, I wouldn't say that we're a bunch of well, well, we might be um, inadvertent cheats, right? Uh, yeah. Um, no, it's because we have to a lot of times you have to cross-reference rules with each other right and we have to be and it's not just a hey sitting next to a buddy hey can you read this rule what does this paragraph say are you interpreting this the same way that i am i mean you are online with somebody and you're asking someone hey what do you think about this and i think that's why it's so rich is because we've built this community around us which is weird, I understand, because we're building a community around us for a bunch of solo gamers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. <laughs> um, but but we want to be able to interact with people. Still, sometimes we want to be able to interact with people and share the experience and share, that you're it, having. Exactly, and share the experience. And then sometimes it's just like, hey, I need help trying to figure out what this is even saying. Right. You know, what do you think about it? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So going on to the solo gaming community, mm-hmm. there are, and I'm I'm not a member of these because I'm not a big solo gamer, but there are. A number of Facebook groups out there for for, for solo gamers and yep. things like that. And as you say, it is quite a strong community, and that community is, is growing uh-huh. because the amount of games that are coming out that have solo modes. Yep. yep. Um, you know, you know, on Board Game Geek, um, the one player guild, right? On Board Game Geek is like the second or third largest group right. on Board Game Geek. Yeah. With with I, I'm looking it up right now with nine thousand four hundred one wow. members. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's considerable. Yeah, and, and going back to what we were saying earlier on about in the industry, if you are publishing a game and you have a solo mode for that game, you mm-hmm. will sell more. Yeah, it, it is true. Because there are a number of people who will not buy a game if it doesn't have a solo mode, mm-hmm. irrespective of whether they're not likely to play it. But the fact that if it doesn't have a solo mode, suddenly they cannot now play it solo. True. Yeah. So yeah, by by making your game available for for, mm-hmm. for a one player mode, mm-hmm. you are going to basically increase the, the the target audience you, you for will, that game. You will, and and it's it's weird. I think I think I'm on the fringe with this, right? Be, because I am, I I I very highly respect publishers who say, no, this game is a two to four player game right. only. This is not two to five. This is not one to four. Yep. This is a two to four player game only. I I very much so respect publishers who do that. Um, and and so, but but once again, I think I'm on the outside feeling of this because most player most people are just like, oh, well, just give me a solo game. Right. Just give me the solo mode for this. Give me a solo mode, and you'll see it in Kickstarter all the time. When's the solo mode going to be yeah, available? Yeah, and if it isn't, I'm out. Yeah, and if it isn't, I'm out. Yeah. And I'm just like, is. It's hard because whenever you're whenever you're publishing a game, you it's more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's more money, but 
But I guess I'm at the point to where I know that it's tacked on and I feel that it's tacked on. Right. And it gives me a different experience of that game than the actual, what the experience is supposed to be. Okay. Right. So if it's a game about wheeling and dealing and negotiation and trying to make this system, this little engine work and somebody goes, hey, can we, uh, can we have a solo mode? And, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, but it's, but there's negotiation in this game. Yeah. And, werewolf. Solo mode. Yeah. Well, Am I a werewolf? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a flip no. over a card, roll yeah. a die, roll a die on a four or five. I am. Yeah, oh, there you go. Right, but good. but I mean that that's that's hyperbolic, but it's also true to a degree. Like there are games that people will toss out. I'm like, well, I guess I've got to make a solo mode. I'm like, why? Right. Okay. Why do you have to make a solo mode? You know, I would much rather, I'd much rather people just make make a two player game that's just the two player game. Right. Right. Um, G and T, uh, the war game publisher, they yeah. do. Um, for them, almost every single war game they publish, they ha they have a couple of requirements. One of them is it has to be soloable somehow. Now with war games, it's weird, right? Yeah. Because with war games, most of them, especially if they're if they're just chits on a map that you're moving around, you can just play both sides, and then they call that soloable. I, okay. <laughs> whatever, you know, because it's all perfect information, and so you know what's happening, and right. so you're you're just making the decisions for both sides, which is fine. Okay. You know, I know some people who absolutely love it. I depending on what it is I like it or I don't um, but then the other thing is that they have to have like shorter scenarios like that's one of the yeah. big things that GMT does is that they don't want it to be a six hour long game only you need to have a 60 minute scenario right. involved in okay. whatever you design I've spoken to designers about this um, but it's interesting because on the flip side then you'll have a game that is a solitaire game and then someone will go oh well, we need to we need, I'll need to make this two player why? Why do you need to make okay. it? Two, why do you need to make it two player? Like I've seen that um, Navajo Wars from Joel Toppin and GNT is a stellar solitaire game. Okay. It is in my top five solo games of all time. Right. And there, there are two player rules in that game. Okay. And I don't understand why. Right. The, the Oniverse games, right? Oniram, yeah, Sylvian, yeah, yeah. all those games. They're solo games. They're solo games. Solo, solitaire games. They're right. solitaire yeah. games, but they also have two player rules in them. Right. Which. For me personally, I don't care for. Um, Jamie Maltman plays the Oniverse games with his kids, yes. which I think is beautiful, yeah. and I love that. He always reports like every single time someone's like, "I don't understand why Oniram gets played two player," and Jamie's <laughs> like, "I play with my kids yeah. all the time, and it's wonderful." And I love that he does that. Um, but I, and so I'm glad that they're there. Which, which from Jamie was nice because for a long time I was like, I just don't understand why these rules are in here for yeah. two player. That just seems like whatever, you know. But Jamie's like, no, but I, I play with my kids all the time and they're they're okay. stellar. I'm like, oh, that's good to know. Yeah. So it's like, it makes me want to like revisit them with my wife and sit down and right. play these things because they're cooperative. And yeah. that's the best part. I mean, you're not playing, you're not making the only for, you're not making Onirum a, a competitive game anymore. You're yeah. making it a cooperative game. Okay. okay, well, let's see what we can do. So this is, going back to me and solo games, this is one reason, another reason why I don't play solo games. I, I don't like... D I, I, I'm happy with my own company, uh -huh. right? And I don't get lonely or anything like that, but... When I'm doing something, I want to share that experience with somebody else, whether that's mm -hmm. going to Tintagel to see King Arthur's Castle, <laughs> or going to the cinema, or even just going for a walk. Sure. I want to do those things with other people so that I can have a shared experience, we can talk to other people. So playing a game, so play, I mean, cooperative games were not a thing for me five, six years ago. Now, sure. now they are, Yeah. completely. Um, but yeah, playing a game with somebody else, whether it be cooperative or whether it be competitive, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that with somebody else mm -hmm. and I'm sharing that experience. And if I was to sit down and play, you know, Mage Knight on my own for three hours, it's like, well, I'll enjoy the mechanics of the game. Yeah. But I'll play a computer game. If, if it, the solo gaming sure. that I do is generally computer gaming, okay. board gaming wise, I want to share that experience with somebody else. I know Daniel Newman does a lot of the escape room games mm -hmm, yeah. on his own. Yep, yep. I cannot imagine anything worse. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Daniel, I love you to bits. But that, for me, I don't want that personal puzzle challenge myself. I want to solve a puzzle with you. Sure. And it's the same with Spirit Island, uh -huh. and it's the same with everything else where there's a puzzle. How are we going to do this? Mm -hmm. Right, well, mm -hmm. I could do this. Ah, yeah, but what about this? Mm -hmm. And the times which, you know, me and Vicky have played. Uh, you know, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective together or we've played some of those other puzzle games and it's not because she's my partner and I'm enjoying playing games with her and she'll hate this if she listens to it but if I was playing that with you and we had that similar experience mm -hmm. it's that experience which would be, you know, 
oh, and somebody spots something, but then the other person misses something else, oh, exactly. but then they spot something, and, and you've done it together. Uh -huh. And that, for me, puzzle solving together yeah. is, is great, because you know, I'm, I'm not the most intelligent pe person, and, and there's certain things which I won't get, but then somebody else will, will get, get, and it's yeah. when you start complimenting each other. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, once again, I think this still goes back to, part of this for me specifically still goes back to the genre of what you're playing, right? What type of game category you're in. So like, uh, like, a, like a, puzzle, a puzzle game or something like Sherlock Holmes or any of the Escape or the mm -hmm. Unlock games or any of that other stuff, I wouldn't do that on my own. Right. Um, but for that exact same reason, right? Someone's going to someone's going to point out something or find something, and then also, I mean, this sound this sounds bad, but like from a financial perspective, like I don't want to like I want to share that with someone because right. once it's over, it's over. Yes. You know, and so part of me is like, no, I mean, I I love like I love playing Sherlock Holmes with my wife, mm -hmm. um, but if I played it on my own, it would be fine. It wouldn't be how I'd want to spend my time, though. Right. Right. Um, which is why I think, I think for solo gaming, I either do the kind of like these fifteen-minute small box games yep. that are just nice to just knock out on a school night or something, or I do something significantly longer. Right. right? A different type of experience that I can't get any other way. Okay. Right. So you're talking like a, a five or a six-hour long war game. Yeah. Or um, or sometimes it's just like a forty-five-minute. Euro, or I'm playing Aura and Labora, right. you know, for an hour and a half or so. Yeah, you know, just whatever it is, somewhere along that mix. I think for once again, I don't, I don't necessarily play dungeon crawlers, mm -hmm. but like Donnie, one of the other guys on the show, he loves dungeon crawlers. Right. And he loves minis and pushing those guys around and yeah. just seeing what happens, you know. Um, which I love that he loves that stuff because right. I don't. So I, I, I have a respect for those games, even if I don't. They're not my game of choice, yeah. right? Um, but he'll sit there and he'll just move those guys around and just do stuff. Pretty much, honestly, the same way that I do that with war games. Okay. I'm just going to move these guys over here and I'm just going right. to see what happens. Okay. I'm roll some dice. Oh, great, bad, whatever it is, yeah. you know? I mean, the solo gaming that I do do, I have played Feast for Odin solo mm -hmm. 15 times. Mm -hmm. So yeah. after me saying I don't do solo games or anything else, I've done that like 15 times. Oh, this sure. field, I've played that solo about 12 times. Oh, yeah. Because it's quick. I, it's well, so yes, quick. It, it is. And oh my zero, gosh. You know, it there's, it's just like, oh, do that, do that, mm -hmm. do that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 25 minutes, half an hour, whatever. <laughs> well, for Nusfjord, yeah. it's like 10 minutes, yeah. <laughs> 15 well, minutes. With, with, you know, and it's, I mean, Rosenberg is just like the perfect conglomeration of everything that I need in right. a solo Euro game, okay. right? Um, most most Euro games don't have solitaire modes in them. Um, and if they do, it feels like they're tacked on yeah. to a degree. Um, or... I'm going to take a step back. Most Euro games that I would enjoy don't have solo okay. modes, right? Because there are, there are a lot there are a lot that have some in there. But it's like Rosenberg is like this is why I will blind buy almost anything from him. Yeah. Just, Just because I know it's a game that I'm going to get and that I I will be able to play solo. It might not be the best solo, but it's going to be really good yeah. solo. Like Glass Road, I have played Glass Road more than any other Rosenberg game right. out there. Right. Okay. And it is I I love that game. I've played half of my plays are solo. I would say probably about yeah. 15 okay. of my plays are solo. But I love it multiplayer. And so I use the solo game as like, well, I mean, I'm going to, I'll play it solo and just, you know, see how it goes. And, and every single time I go, ah, I'm not sure if I like it solo. But then right. I go back and I play it solo. And I'm like, oh, man, this is really fun. Okay. And I don't know why. Every, because I've, I've played it multiplayer so often. That I'm like, see, oh, I, I recently it. sold Glass Road. And for me mm -hmm. to sell games is unusual. <laughs> for me to sell games which are quite good is even more unusual. But I sold it because I didn't like the multiplayer aspect of, of Glass Road. Oh, really? Yeah, part, mm -hmm. part of one thing I don't like in games is me having to make a decision by guessing what you're going to do mm, mm, mm -hmm. and then me getting that bonus action or not. And, and, oh, and sure. I, I, I don't like sure. that in games and I can't really do that. Um, and then I looked at all of my other Rosenberg games and I said, I'd play all of these instead of that one and I don't play them anywhere near as much as I want to play mm, them. Mm, mm -hmm. Somebody wanted it, so I, I, I let Glass Road go out of my collection. Why not? That's the only bit of the game I don't like. The rest of it was great. Oh, that's funny. But the rest of it, I get that itch from his other games. Sure, so, oh, well, and that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. You know, I tell, <laughs> I, all the time I joke on the show that, that Glass Road is the best Rosenberg game from 2013. Right. Because the other one was Caverna. Right. 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 I'm like, I think Glass Road just got so overshadowed yeah, yeah, yeah. by the monstrosity of a yeah, Brickle yeah, yeah. 2.0. Yeah. Right. And it's just every single time, I'm like, hey, Glass Road, man, that's the best Rosenberg it, it, game. It is, it is quite well. <laughs> well right. right. Anyway, so, so we've got, got two guests, guests on the show, show who are not here with us today. 
Um, but one of them is Steve Manser, who's a friend of mine. He lives like 15 minutes away. Um, he's actually written us an email going yeah. through the deep, because Steve's a big solo gamer. Mm -hmm. So I definitely wanted his input on it. He sent us an email. We're going to read through his email. Well, Travis is going to read through it bit by bit. And then we're going to talk about uh -huh. each individu individual point. So if you want to go ahead with what Steve says first. Yeah, we'll do. Um, there, what's funny is that we've actually talked about a few of these. So as mm -hmm. we go, you know, I'm going to skip over maybe a couple of the okay. points. Um, and Paul sent me this email this morning just to read over and I, I immediately responded back saying, I agree with 100% of this. Like, mm -hmm. it's almost like Steve reached in my brain and said, what, what is Travis like about solo games? Yeah, you which know? was interesting for me to, because I, I, I chatted with you yesterday about this and you mm -hmm. said a few of these things. And then I'd read that email from Steve and I'm like, so the, there's clearly something in the psychological <laughs> makeup of people that that is a common thing. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that might be why the solo gaming community is quite, you know, tightly knit and growing yep. and everything else, because there's obviously something you have in common about the reasons why you like We don't solo like games. talking to people. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, before we get started, actually, the, Steve uh, mentions that out of his 150 or more games in his collection, he'd say about 80% of them are have solo modes or are solo-friendly co-ops. Yes. And I would say, I would say mine is probably equitable than right. that. Okay. You know, it's just that that's what I gear myself towards. You know, yeah. I want to make sure that I, I can play it solo. Yeah, so I think I think if a game came out that didn't have a solo mode, I think that would definitely dissuade Steve from Oh sure. From getting it. That that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Um, number one was lack of players and interest from family. So more table action was guaranteed with solo friendly games. We've already chatted about that. That was that was my very first point. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The the, the opportunity mm -hmm. to do it based on you know the friends yep. that you have and, and their families and everything else. This next one, uh, this next point, I see I see a lot with people, especially the listeners of low player count. Okay. I see this a lot. They have a young family, yep. or and or they have a high pressure job, and yes. so that means that they just have less time to get out of the house. Yeah. Right. Um, we have a. There's, there's a really good friend of mine, Paul, not you, Paul. Not you're me. a good Paul, but he lives in Houston. That's so bad te Paul. That's Texan Paul. Okay, right. Texan Paul. <laughs> you're, you're British Paul. He's Texan Paul. Um, he, um, he plays a whole lot of war games, and he plays them solo because I think his kid like just turned one. Okay. Or so, one and a half, right? Yeah. And, so, and he's on the road a bunch. And so for him, it's, that's, that's the only way that he's able to play games. Right. It, it's solo, and then occasionally somebody will come over to his house. Okay. You know, Donnie had a kid just over a year ago. Yeah. And so for this last year, it's been, I drive to Donnie's house a lot. Right. Right? Because he can't get out much. Yeah. Or he's playing games on his own. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Steve only lives 15 minutes away, but he works up in Bristol. He gets the training in the morning. He's up Ooh. at 5.30 in the morning. Ooh. By the time he gets home... And then he's got family and kids and everything else. Oh, sure. To get around here for 7.30. And it's like, well, <laughs> I, I could possibly make it, but then I'll be asleep by 9 o'clock. Totally. So it, it's just, you know, yep. life. Uh -huh. uh, next up is the chance to play games that I want to play <laughs> rather than group consensus or the quote, the same old games or things that were okay, but not scratching my itch. That last line, things that were okay, but not necessarily scratching the itch of playing. Oh, my goodness. That, I feel like that's the one that gets me a lot right. because we'll 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 get to a game day and um, <laughs> someone will want to play this game that involves backstabbing. Yeah, and I'm like, no, <laughs> sure, we'll play that. And I'm sitting here with my little clamshell winsome train game on cardstock and poker chips. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah. come on, guys, let's go. Because yeah. this is the only time that I'm going to be able to play a four-player game of something. Right. So I bring any, any four-player game that I'm able to bring, like, let's play this game, you know. Um, and so oftentimes it is like, it, it just doesn't, and, and we all have that. We yeah. all have that to where there's, there. we all sit around at the table and like, well, I, I don't want to play that. Yep. But, but you feel like a jerk telling them, no, well, no, you can't play that game. And so you eventually succumb to it and say, okay, fine, we'll play this game. You right. Know, we'll, we'll play this game. Like, Donnie does that a lot because he hates splatter games. Okay. But everybody else in the group likes splatter games. Okay. And so, and so occasionally he will succumb to a game of, like, Great Zimbabwe or yep. Food Chain. Um, more often than not, he'll just show up late. <laughs> Which that's what oh, he's... I missed out. Oh, <coughs> that's sorry what, that's what he's done the last few times. He's right. like, oh, you guys, you know, I won't get there until about one in the afternoon. Why don't you guys go ahead and do Great Zimbabwe? Yeah. And I know exactly what he's thinking, and I and I think, yeah, that's probably good because he'll be insufferable for that for right. that time, right? Okay. Uh, next up is the ability to do things at my own pace. 
without yeah. worrying about others. Uh, this is key to having games that allow me to unwind after right. work or family stuff, burn my brain in a different way, or just enjoy. So obviously we talked about the second half of this, but but the first half, the ability to do things at my own pace without worrying about others, um, one of our really good friends and, and who's been on low player count a couple times, Cliff, he is he's super smart. Like ridiculously intelligent and right. he is able to see like he's he, he's a professional poker player okay right? and right. so he's able to see paths yep. and systems and see how things work like no joke we sat down for our first game together of fields of arl and he literally just sat there and stared at the board for about 20 minutes right. he read everything saw how things interwove and he destroyed me yep. in that first game and that's just that's how his brain works now he does yeah well, you remember when i taught you how to play lisboa at pg oh yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, uh -huh. and you sat there and three of you were all right it's a Vital Lacerda game. It's really heavy. We're playing it for the first time. We'll we'll work our way through it. Yep. Right. Half an hour in, Isaac Childress, <laughs> he, he, he'd worked everything out. <laughs> of course. Absolutely yeah. destroyed everybody. E exactly. But that some people can do that. Some uh -huh. people can work out, as you said, they see the paths. Exactly. It's like looking at the matrix and it's, seeing it's, the patterns within it. And I like, am, gosh, I am not that person. No, no, I am no. not that smart, no. right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny, and it's funny though, because like Cliff will do this, but that's why he loves so and he he plays all of Vital's um he plays all of his games solo. And right. he loves them because he's able He's able to sit down with a copy of Vinos and just just play with it and just go, you know, but if I do this I've got twelve actions to do that. Exactly. How am I gonna do that? And in... he and he will he will reverse engineer what he's doing. Right. And and it's so great to see, and especially with the solo game, because it's like I need to optimize this as best as I can. Which is also interesting because then whenever he plays he's played it so much solo that whenever he plays it multiplayer, he destroys us in those games okay, anyways. Right. Because he's already figured out, well, okay, the contingency plan of this, 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 this happening by other people, I got that worked out. And it's nice when a solo <laughs> game somehow manages to prepare you for the multiplayer game because mm -hmm. sometimes that's not always the case you'll play that's the true. solo game and you'll be really good at it and then you'll play the multiplayer game and you're like oh wait a minute you've gone there oh that's where i always go well, yeah yeah well i now can't do that plan that i was gonna do so mm -hmm. it's completely messed up so i guess the best solo modes for games are ones which randomly recreate the actions of other players to simulate it, them doing things. Yeah, well, it, exactly. Like so, so whenever you play Feast for Odin, yeah. you know, those, you're, you're what, what yeah, I love. Yeah, you're controlling them. What I love about Odin is that you're blocking yourself. Yes, which so you is, are in full <laughs> You are, you're just like, but if I go there, but I need to go here, yeah, yeah, yeah. because I need to have this, this card for whatever reason, but then you go, oh, but, but then I can't do it next round. Yeah. And it's always like the worst thing ever, right? Yeah. But it's, oh, it's fun. Yeah. Um, Next up, he says, the benefit of experiencing no downtime or waiting between turns. Um, and, and he's like, it's not a problem if I'm the only player. And that's, exactly. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's true. So you know. some people suffer from analysis paralysis or AP. And Cliff. Some people, some people are, you know, I'm, I'm happy that I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've got a number of friends who really don't like it when people are, sure. are slow. Mm -hmm. And if, if you are one of those people that don't like slow players... Yeah. And you're playing solo, as you say, that problem is gone. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's I, I don't. Removed. I, I personally don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Um, Cliff, Cliff is a slow player because he's thinking about everything. Yeah. But that never bothers me. Right. You know, it bothers. But if me. it did bother you, then solo game. Exactly. So uh, the last uh, the last point that it brings up is it's the opportunity to learn the game rules and test strategies to get a feel for the gameplay with no pressure. It also helps me become a better teacher of games. I, I do that a lot. Okay. Right. And so I'll and I know a lot of players who will only play games solo to learn how everything works. See, I don't do that. Right. And I teach. Oh, and games. see, that's interesting because I would have thought that you would no. set up a game no. and run through it a bunch or run through it at least one time. Because I like the shared experience of doing that with my friends. Oh, see, that's interesting. So it's like, right, guys, none of us know how to play this game. In fact, sometimes haven't even read the rule book. Oh, we are uh, now going to sit here and we are going <laughs> to learn this game together, yeah, as a, as a group. Uh -huh. And I like that experience. Yeah, sure, yeah. I could take time out that I don't that I don't have. <laughs> In, but if I did have, I uh -huh. could set up the game up. I could yep. read the rules myself. Yep. I could watch the video myself. I, yep. I could play through a solo game myself, uh -huh. all in preparation for the game night. Sure. But actually, going through that with everybody else. I, I like that. As oh, I say, man, I that's... like doing these things with other people. Oh man, that's that's pulling teeth for me. I absolutely right. hate it. 
oh, I hate that so much. Uh, there's nothing worse, for me, there's nothing worse than showing up to a game day and someone goes, okay, hey, let's play this game. Cool. Do you know how to play it? Nope. N no, no. I you... wouldn't do it at a game day. Oh, no, I have done it at a game day. First time we ever played Madeira was in the middle of a charity 24 hour <laughs> event. It was two o'clock in the morning. Oh, my God. We'd gosh. been awake for 14 hours and we oh. went, Madeira? Yeah, let's get the rule book out. And we learn how to play from the rule book. Wow. Uh, it was, oh, it, man. It was insane. Oh, it was I was memorable. Hate. Oh, <laughs> sure, sure. That's a good experience. So, oh, just going back to one funny. thing that, that Steve mentioned in his email, and you touched on this at the start, is coming home after a busy, stressful day sure. and, and doing that mm -hmm. is a kind of meditation or relaxation. Yeah, yeah. I can't see that. As I say, touching what I said earlier on, I, I find it quite stressful. I mean, I love playing games, uh -huh. but playing a solo game, I don't do that to unwind. Sure, yeah. I don't know what I do to unwind, but playing a solo game... <laughs> I don't think you do unwind. No, I don't, but playing a solo game is not something I would do to relax. I, sure. I would do it because I would probably enjoy it, Okay. Yeah. but I definitely wouldn't be doing it to, yeah. to relax. That's well, I mean, interesting. To be, to be fair, I'm not like setting up Mage Night no. and playing through Mage Night <laughs> on a Tuesday after I get home from teaching kids all day. I mean, I'm playing... Well, I'm playing a game like Onirum, which is oh, okay. which is like 15 or 20 minutes and involves shuffling and a little bit of thinking. Yeah. You know, and I shuffle some cards and I deal them out and, oh, well, that sucked. I guess I'll play again because I died. Right. Or, you know, okay. or I lost or whatever. Yeah. I mean, sometimes sometimes I'll come home and I'll, I'll say, oh, well, maybe I'll play a Rosenberg game. Like, like Indian Summer has actually been great. Okay. I've really enjoyed Indian Summer a lot. I like that you can, that you actually play three different rounds in Indian Summer. Um, and it's like a 45 minute experience, but it's like three 15 minute games right. that you just add your score together and see what happens or take the average score or whatever it is. Um, I've enjoyed that a whole lot because it's like it'll build up a little bit, clear it away, build up a little bit, clear it away, okay. build up one last time, clear it away. Oh, that, that was a good little experience to play. Okay. You know? And I love stuff like that. So whenever I say meditative, once again, I, I, for me, war games have become meditative to, right. to a degree because with some war games it is they are a little random yep. right because there's a die roll for yeah, combat yeah. and stuff like that you know and so for me a lot of war gaming or historical or political games um, there will be this random element so it is just kind of a, I just want to see how this goes right you know and for me really speaking to Steve's last point it works great because I'm able to look back and go what did I do well and what did I do wrong so it helps with my strategy yep. and then what did I mess up and what did I get right so it helps with my teaching Okay. all together all right. in this one situation and then that way whenever I sit down and say hey I'm going to teach you how to play enemy action or den? Yeah, I know exactly what to tell you. Right. You okay. Know? I know exactly. Hey, this is this is a good strategy. This is a terrible strategy. And then also, I just know legitimately like how the game works right. it, to a to a deeper understanding because okay. I've played it a couple times solo. And oh yeah, I can teach it to you. That's easy. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's it from Steve's email. Yeah, I mean, he talked about... Uh, it's great because he talked about the, the stigma of a solo gamer. Yeah. Which which I absolutely love because... See, I didn't realize there was one. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, there is. There okay. is. And so he, he talks about... I mean, he, he I'm not going to read the entire thing, but he does start off with, despite growing popularity, you know, I can't believe how many people quietly or openly mock him for playing solo games right and to a degree it's true right and so some of the ones that you brought up is you must have no friends you've got to be socially oh, okay. awkward right. meetups are cool and there's no need to be nervous are you so competitive that you can only play on your own and why are you so scared to get things wrong in front of everyone Right. You know, and there is a bit of this stigma with solo gamers of like, well, we don't have any friends, we don't want to get out of the house. And while th or while that is true to a degree, um I talk a lot about mental health and yeah. how important that is and how important it is to take care of yourself. And if it involves me, we have a great meetup that happens that happens once a month called Dallas Games Marathon. Yeah. Um and there's a Thursday night component Every single Thursday, right? That you, that you show up and it's they and they have a they have a game uh, game collection of over fifteen hundred games in this space. So you can show up, you pay a couple bucks, you can take whatever game off the shelf, and I will only go there if somebody else I know is there. Right. I am not going to go there on my own. I've done it a few times, and honestly, I I sit in a corner. Okay. And I just don't play games. I right. play on my phone until somebody I know shows up, and it's because it's awkward for me, and there is a little bit of that, and I could sit up there and I could play a solo game. 
game. Yeah. But then, so, but then going to a game meetup <laughs> and playing a solo game in the corner. Yeah. It's like I went to uh, the first year I went. I've been to HeavyCon twice out in yeah. Colorado with Heavy Cardboard, and the first time that I went. Tony, who I love Tony Fryer, he, he jokingly said, so what are you going to do? You're just going to set Navajo Wars up in the corner right, okay. or roads and boats up in the yeah, corner yeah, and yeah. play soul games? And, and part of it was like, ha you're making a joke. But then part of it was also like, like no, like I'm here to play games with people. Yeah. And, I, and, and I wouldn't have, at the time it was fine, but then upon further reflection, I'm like, yeah, that's... That was honestly a little rude to right. a degree because it's like I'm not going to spend all the money to fly out here and stay in this hotel to go play solo games. Yeah. Now, now will I play solo games in between things? Sure. Okay. But I'm not going to come to a gaming convention and just sit there and play Roads of Boats in the corner right. for the entire convention, right. <laughs> even though I might not want to talk to people. You okay. Know? But I mean, like I'll bring like whenever I go to cons or something, I'll bring I'll bring a handful of solo games to play. But right. once again, you're talking these are 15 to 20 minute solo games. I'm not bringing a two hour war game to play or anything and I'll just I'll play it like in the morning or okay or late at night or maybe over lunch like BGG Con um, the closing ceremonies on Saturday yeah, yeah, where yeah. they're doing the significantly long raffle yes all of my like so so every single day BGG Con is different for for my game group like I see them only on Saturday really right. because one day I'm gaming I'm doing war games all day the next day I'm doing train games all day and yeah. then Saturday is we get into the main hall we play all these mid to heavy Euro games and that's just what we do the yeah. whole time but whenever that talking comes on, whenever that in the, the two closing, hour, the yeah, two yeah, hour yeah. or it, it, yeah, it, it feels like it's two yeah. hours, but I think it's only one. But regardless, okay, I, I said it. I always play solo games, and so it's for me, it's not awkward in that setting. But once again, I wouldn't show it to BGG Con with the sole intention of playing solo games. Instead, yeah, I would just yeah. stay at home. But it's interesting that you still take some solo games. Sure, because I've got the iPad now, so oh, I'm yeah. playing you know through the ages or the Pathfinder oh, Adventure Card mm -hmm. Game or something like that. Yeah. So. There you go. That's what I do when I when I go to bed and I can't sleep. Oh, I'll just, sure. I'll just so I'm doing effectively solo gaming. Yeah, I'm doing board gaming. Yeah, but I'm doing it. Well, well, the th app. this is an entirely different discussion, yeah. right? Um, I have tried apps, and I just I can't. They don't retain my attention. Right. Just I, I and I think that's I, I, and it's the same thing with computer gaming as well. And I think that's why. I can do solo gaming is because it's all concentrated at this one time. Sure. You know? Um, so, like, even if I'm playing a game, like a war game, over multiple days, I'll get to a stopping point. Like, a, like, like a, it's the end of the deck that I'm going yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever it is, you know? Or I make it through day five of 15 days. So, I'm a third of the way through, then I'm going Done. to stop, right. you know? Um, and so, for me, like, apps, as I said, th this is a whole other discussion, but apps, I, I love that a lot of people are able to do them. Yeah. I personally can't. Well, there's the, there's the apps. So on the flight to, where did I just go? Origins. Mm -hmm. On the flight to Origins last month, mm -hmm. I think I played seven games of Through the Ages. Oh, that's great. Because I'm talking about me playing a solo game of Through the Ages against the AI, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rather than the asynchronous games against other people, which I also do. Exactly. But those games could come on for a month. Oh, sure. You know, and, and every four or five days, oh, Ugh. notification, it's my turn. Oh, yeah. Right? They're, they're great because I get to play games with people who I wouldn't normally get to play yeah. against. Yep. So that's fine. Um, but yeah, the solo get, solo board gaming on the app, mm -hmm. that's what I would do, as you say, if I, if I was at a convention and I went to bed early or I woke up early or mm -hmm. I was sat on my own for lunch, oh, sure. I'd, I'd, I'd just do that. And i just read a book. Right, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't read books. Anyway, oh. right, another guest of the show, Ricky Royal. So Ricky Royal is a big solo gamer. Uh, he does the Box of Delights yep. YouTube channel where he plays through games mm -hmm. solo. He's also known for creating solo modes mm -hmm. for existing games. That's something he's done. Yep. So we don't have anything in written form from Ricky, but what we do have is we have an audio clip, which I am going to put in right here. Hi, this is Ricky Royal from Box of Delights, and I'm a solo gamer. Solo gaming for me is a great way to unwind. Better than a book or a jigsaw puzzle or a crossword puzzle. It's, it's like all of those things combined. The tactile nature of a jigsaw puzzle, you've got pieces that you push around. It tells a story, like a book, and every game you play is a different story. And it offers a puzzle to solve, like a crossword or Sudoku. In today's world of noisy technology clamouring for your attention, a solo board game is a wonderful escape. So, the first thing I noticed there when he was saying it is he said, unwind. Uh -huh. And yeah, there you yeah, go, yeah, there's yeah, that yeah, thing yeah, again, yeah, you, you guys yeah, are doing yeah. this. 
to unwind. I think you just need to learn to unwind. It's just me. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just clearly need to chill. Now, the, the other thing I found interesting from Ricky there is um, he's associating things with other, other non-gaming things. So jigsaw puzzles. So the tactile oh, yeah, nature sure. of a board game physically moving bits around, yes. associating with the jigsaw puzzle. Uh -huh. The puzzle aspect of trying to work something out crossword uh -huh. and the story element because Ricky does a lot of solo gaming for games that have stories and they're they very tell story driven very yes. story driven like reading a book so yep. he's associating his gaming with non-gaming things mm -hmm. and saying look it, it, it's the best of all of these hmm. put together yeah um, and, and that's it you know one of the first videos that I watched of Ricky's was his Mage Knight one oh, sure. and his one from Robinson Crusoe yep. which you know, they, they tell a story as you're going along and he always embellishes it with, with, with extra flavour, yes. which really it's adds so to the, you know, the theme of, of, of it and the enjoyment of the game. Sure, you could play Robinson Crusoe. I was like, right, I'm going to spend one action here and move a cube from there to there. Mm -hmm. Right, or you, you could, could say, say, right, we're going hunting <laughs> in the bushes, we're, we're trying, trying to find some food. Some food. Yep. Oh, oh no, yep. you know, yep. the, the story is there every time for, for you for you to do it. it. And in Robinson Crusoe, Crusoe with, with the flavor text, text on the cards, the story is being fed to you, mm -hmm. which helps. With, with Mage Knight, Knight, there is no flavor text, text on the cards. You kind of have to tell your own story. You fill it in yourself. You fill it in yourself. You are still telling a story, but you're not you're not being told what that story is because there's flavor text on the cards. But there's definitely there's, There's definitely, definitely a story, story there. there. Um, so yeah, so your, your thoughts, thoughts on what Ricky said? Oh yeah, sure. So, um, oh man, you know, we actually had, we actually had an episode recently um, about, we had a discussion about if solo games are puzzles. Right. Right. So we had- we, Some of them are. Oh, and, and some, some of them are. So because, because the definition of a puzzle is that it is solvable. Right. Right, and so the entire definition of a puzzle is that you're, you're, you can solve the thing, and it's not like a Sudoku, right? Yep. So Sudoku, there are there is one way to finish this, and then that's that's it, right? So some some solo games, some solitary games are puzzles, but most of them for me are experiences, right? And so so it's going to be story driven. Um, and whenever I say that I don't like, whenever I say that I don't like story driven games or something like that, I mean, I, I, I fill in war games the exact same way. War games are my story driven games. Right. right. So I'm, so I'm playing, uh, I'm playing Enemy Coast Ahead, the, the, the Doolittle Raid, right? And so okay. this is, this is all about, <laughs> this is all about England sending all their planes over to, or America sending all their planes over to Tokyo, right? right? Um, and, and the Pacific Theater. And so it's, I love the story behind that because there are, there is story behind yeah. all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so, and they're, and Jerry White, who designed it for GMT, does this great job of telling, have a little flavor text about who's going where and what they're doing and how it works. And right. whenever the story resolves, you could, you could read multiple accounts of what actually happened and what speculatively could have happened. Okay. And, and so, so it's really cool because you get to fill in the story as you go and so I love that component of it but that's not a puzzle because there's so many ways for it to end and there's so many ways for it to be and there's a random solved. element during the game oh sure if, sure if it's foggy that day yes, then yes. Some, something like that yeah, yeah. exactly right yeah. and so going along this line though and you and I have talked about this before we, we were talking about this just yesterday um, is Aura and Labora yes. is that a puzzle or is that or is that a, an experiential solo game that has different endings? You know, it, it's a puzzle. They, I mean, Aura El Labora, for those who don't know, is it's a Nouveau Rosenberg game with zero variability. Uh -huh. And I'm normally big on variability, but I love Aura El Labora because I love the mechanics of the game and how it plays. But you start off in stage A and you see the A cards. And it's always the same A cards. Always the same ones. You don't shuffle and randomly take. No, it's always the same ones. Then the game progresses at a certain pace and yep. speed and then yep. when B happens the B buildings come out it's exactly you could sit down and, and I did this my first solo play I recorded every single thing that I did oh on a piece of paper I wrote down I did this action I did this action I did this action sure I could play that game again and follow those exact same steps in exactly the same place and, I, and the outcome would be exactly the same that's true there is zero variability or randomness in the game it's completely under your control yep and, and the, the objective, objective of the solo game, game in Aura El Labora is to score 500 points. Which is ludicrous. Yep. <laughs> I mean, I, I, think, I think I've got like 380 is the highest I've ever Oh, I've I, I, I beaten it. I have I've done over 500. Oh, I think, well, I, I bow to you, yeah. sir. I bow to you. Um, but yeah, it, 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 that, that is, yeah, at least with Nusfjord, 
is, is random, random buildings at the start. Mm -hmm. Or, or a labora, it's exactly the same buildings every time you play. And I, I have no problem with that. Yeah, it, it's my, great. My, my favorite solo game of all time is Roads and Boats. Right. Right. And that is that is a puzzle. Oh, yeah, there, absolutely. There is, there is no randomness. But here, here's the thing. I, I think for me, is with, with a game like Roads and Boats or a game like Oran Labora, there's, there's so much time between the beginning and the end. And there are so many... Choices. So many minuscule choices, yeah, 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 seemingly yeah. insignificantly minuscule yeah. choices that you can make. Do I the choice the building there or there? <laughs> and, and that's going to happen. And that, well, and then that's that's where everything just branches out yeah. immensely. You know, do I do do my donkeys take the extra step to move the wood? Just one extra step, so that then the next round. I mean, it's just all of these small yeah. things, and it's way above my processing power. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, it's also like I don't care. I don't need to solve it. I just want to do the best that I can. Yeah. And so if I'm sitting down with roads and boats on a weeknight, I'm sitting down with roads and boats and a glass of wine yeah. or a cup of coffee, I have music on in the background, and I'm just seeing what happens. Yeah. And I love the experience of seeing what happens. It's I know some people that are like, well, I have to solve it. I have to do the best that I can. Right. And yeah, that's true. I want to do well, but it's also like... That's a little above my processing power at the end of a long day. But the other thing is, once you've solved it, the game is now unplayable to you. Mm, no, no. I mean, or at Elabora, yeah, you get over 500, you can say, right, I've done it. But you could say, right, I'm going to play it again. I'm going to try and beat my last score. Yes. You could do that. But let's say that he published and said, right, the maximum, maximum score you can ever get in that game is... 612, for sure. example, right? Sure. So, so you math it out and you play it every night for a year and you get 612... <laughs> you now have an unplayable game because you've solved it. That is there, true. There is now no variability, so you just repeat the same moves. Uh -huh. Me and you, we don't have the brain processing power <laughs> to ever get that, yeah. which means we get more enjoyment out of it. It's like when we're watching um, films or TV series, and, mm -hmm. and Vicky will pick up oh, yeah. on those little hint references, right? My wife is right? exactly and, and she will have worked something out, which then becomes a reveal at yep. the end. Yep. Right. Uh -huh. Well, uh -huh. I've enjoyed the film more than she has because I'm stupid. Right? Because she's <laughs> yes. seen it, so yeah. she's worked it out. She whereas knows what the ending I'm is. along for the ride, and oh wow, he's dead. Oh, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't realize that. And she said, "Yeah, well, that was obvious like an hour ago." And I'm like, "Well, yeah. well, I enjoyed the film more than you." So there, yeah. <laughs> there yeah. we go. Yeah. And I will play or at Labora, you know, twenty times or whatever, and mm -hmm. I'll be enjoying it each time because I'm not able to work out what the optimum move is. Yes. So yeah, yeah, and I mean, the, you're you're right. There's something to be said about that. But however, the number of plays that it would take to hit that score, you've got your money's worth. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, mean, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, like people people freak out about the cost of roads and boats because it's out of print, yeah. right? And people are paying 150, 200 dollars mm -hmm. for roads and boats. I've seen it online all the time, and people are like, "Oh my gosh, is it really worth it?" I'm like, "Well, it depends." What do you want out of a game? Yeah. Like, can you solve Roads and Boats? And this is what I love about it. I, I don't know if you've, I'm sure you have, right? But you can go on the Splatter website and you can see the high scores. Right. Like the current high scores of the individual scenarios oh, okay. for Roads right. and Boats, okay. which I absolutely love that you can. And you could also get other solo maps as well if you want to yeah. play it. But I just love that somebody's like, well, the high score for this one is 276. I'm right. like, oh, that's great. I'm never going to get that. But that's <laughs> fine. You know, if I get, if it's possible. If yeah. I, <laughs> you know, if I'm able, to, if I'm able to build the bank or, or the whatever that creates all the coins. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh, I, I lost mint. it. The mint, yes. If, I'm ever, if, if I can build just one build mint, mint, if I just build a mint yeah. and I'm able to produce one thing from that mint, then I feel that I have done yes. well in that game. Yeah. Now, if I'm able to get two... Yeah. I mean, yeah, my I'm first few games of it was because the rulebook doesn't tell you how to do that. Well, no. Yeah, the rules are there. But it's only when you go, oh, right, so <laughs> I need to be making certificates. Right, to make certificates, I need two gold and a paper yep. or something. Yeah, so yeah, to get yeah, the yeah. two gold, I need that. Yep. Oh, so I'm not going to get enough gold from one mine to be able to do... Right, so I'm going to need two mines two or mines. a way of... Eggs, and you work backwards. Yep. And you're like, right, how am I going to get to that end condition? Yeah. And that, what you learn from that, that's the same for every game you play of Roads and Boats, whether it's yep. multiplayer or not. Uh -huh. And if you don't, you know, you've got to find a way of getting fuel. 
Yeah. And there are two ways of getting fuel. You choose which way you want to use based on the map and everything else. Yep. But you're going to have to make fuel you're gonna have at, to. at some point. So, yeah. yeah, there's a puzzle aspect to it. And, you know, when I got roads and boats for myself as a... Because uh, I'd been looking at the game for years. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what I want in a game. Logistics. Perfect. Moving yeah. things around. <laughs> hundreds of pieces. And I was planning, because it was out of print and it was ridiculously really, really expensive, that making my own version. Oh, with, funny. With better artwork. And, oh, you know, sure, I'd do sure, it myself. Sure. And then I looked at it and went... Different artwork. Not yeah. necessarily so, no, that's true. <laughs> and then I looked at it and I went, well, this is insane. This will take me months and months to make sure. my own version. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'll buy it myself as a retirement present. Good. When I gave up my job. And, and got it. And the first time we ever played it, we were like, right, so we were, we were an hour and a half in. Maybe two hours in, yeah, and we're all completely doing our own thing. And I don't yep. mind multiplayer solitaire sure. at all. And we're moving our wood around on our yep. donkeys, and I've built some trucks and everything else. And then, and then Tom sent his donkeys over into <laughs> my area, and, I, and I'm doing quotes here in the air yep, yep, because yep. in roads and boats, nothing is yours. Nothing is yours. And he sent these donkeys over, and I went, "Where, where are they going?" They said they're just having a having a wander, <laughs> and they just wandered over, and then they wandered into my area. My area, in yep. quotes. You know it. Where there was a pile of my wood, in yep. quotes, wood yep. that I'd put there, and he picked it up and he wandered off. He just off with wandered it. off. So, so I, so what, what, and then he was having a bit of an altercation with Marcus, who was playing. So I built this boat, sailed it up the river into Marcus's hometown, yep. and there was all of this stone lying around. So I just loaded that onto oh my gosh, raft. I love so, it so much. It's the most interactive game I've got. It's brutal. Which is, it's which is funny. Which is funny. And I love, I, th I think that's what initially drew me to Roads and Boats was that you can play it as nice or as brutal as you want to. Yeah. And you can sit down with, like, and I, whenever I, whenever I teach it, when I teach it to people, I, I have this. I've had this tradition over the last three years that I've taught that I've taught it at BGG yeah. Con, and I just absolutely love it. I, yeah, th the last three years I've taught it at BGG Con. Just I, I teach it one time to a group of people, and I I max it out at three players, including myself. Yeah. You know, um, and I just ask every time, do you want this to be a nice game or a mean game? Right. And some are like, I just want it to be nice because I just want to. Okay. I've so heard, just do I've, your own thing. I've heard about this, yeah. and I just want to see how it works. And some people are like, nope, I want it to be mean. Mm -hmm. Done. You know, and that, that's how it goes. But in, in so bringing in it back solo game that doesn't happen. Bringing it back to solo it, game, yeah, there, yeah, there, it's it's you, and it's a race against time. Yes, is what it is for for solitary interactivity. Yeah. You know, but but once again, it still it, it still has the exact same feel of roads and boats. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're saying, hey, we're gonna play a nice game. Yeah, of it. it's the exact same feel of it. You just know you're playing in your corner, I'm playing in my corner, and then oh, I won or yeah. you won. But it's or like whatever. the solo version of Caverna. That space is gonna have three wood added to it every round. <laughs> yes. So if I don't go there for four rounds, it will have twelve wood. You can do that. You can yep. plan that. Yep. And in roads and boats, you build the mine and you walk away from it, and the mine will start generating gold. Yep. And you can go back later and pick it up. Yep. Add a multiplayer aspect. Not going to happen. Not necessarily. That wood's yeah. going to build up. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to take it. Your mm -hmm. mine's going to generate gold. Somebody's going to take it. Yeah. So you, you, as you say, the rules are the same. You're still playing the same game. Yep. You need to be aware that that stuff is not yours. So Some, yep. somebody else could come along and take it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they. And, and, they and, and if they know, then they, then they yeah, will. Yeah, they will. You know? and, that. And, and, you know, that's that, that's one of my favorite things about... I don't play Lahav solo a mm -hmm. whole lot, but I enjoy the experience sometimes. Um, and with Lahav, it's very much a, what's the largest stack? Yes. You know, oh, that this has 15 wood oh, on I'll it. Take I have 15. A, I'm just going to take the 15 wood. That's my action for the yeah. turn, you know. And so you see that happen a lot. I mean, you see that in multiplayer games. But in solo games, you can really just kind of, you you can intentionally let that happen. Mm -hmm. Of, well, I'm just going to let this build up yeah, all the time. You've got, I really need cattle. Yeah, now. if you've got a plan that says, right, at the end of the game, I need 12 cattle to ship onto there. Yep. I'll just wait for that space to get to 12. And then I will spend one action, get that 12, Done. Efficient. It's but the best part, is, the, the best part, and the hardest part is timing on that because because more often than not with me, I come to that about three turns too late. Okay. You know, I'm like, oh, I need twelve. Ca oh, right. Well, I guess I'm going to get eight or nine. Okay. <laughs> that happens more often than not for me. Right. So uh, we've been going for about an hour. Perfect. It's time to start wrapping things up. Anything else about solo gaming that we haven't talked? There's probably a whole bunch that we. Haven't. What I would what I would say is if there's someone listening who doesn't play solo games because of, say, like the stigma right. of, of solo gaming. Um, 
I, I would say give it a shot. Okay. You know, there are, in, in, and if you're like, well, I don't have any solo games, honestly, look online. Look on the look on the forums for that specific game on Board Game Geek, and oftentimes people are creating solo modes of games. Yes. You know, um, you can, if you're on Facebook, you can join in on Facebook and just ask yeah. around. Um, if you're on BGG, find the one-player guild or find right. low-player account, right? And and you can ask if there are solo versions of these games. There's there's a massive geek list yep. that that has fan made solo variants. Okay. Um, I, I don't know what that geek list is, but it but it's there. Okay. You know, and it has, you know, dozens of pages now because people are just coming up with stuff right. for solitaire games. And they're okay. just publishing it. They're just putting it out there. You know, and, and sometimes they're easy and sometimes they're good and yep. sometimes they're not because yep. they're fan made, right? Um I, so so first thing is give it a shot you know yeah. if, if it's something that 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 you're if it's something that you're not doing because you only because you say that you love the social aspect and you've never tried solo gaming before just get rid of that okay sit down and just give it a shot okay you know um give it a couple shots so i right? try it with a couple of different games because because games that I like to play with other people are not necessarily the games I like to play solo. Yeah. You know, I once I, I've talked about it before. I love train games. I'm not going to play a train game solo. Right. You know, even if there's a game that is soloable, like Age of Steam, you yeah. can play. There are solo maps, and some of them are. You oh, wouldn't play that solo. Uh, some of, some of them are okay. Okay. You know, um, but it depends on the map and the rules and yeah. whatever. But I'd much rather play Age of Steam with three or four players. Right. You know, because okay. it's brutal and why and that solo takes some brutality out okay. of it. You know. Interesting. Um, and so I love train games, but I would rather, a lot of times I'd rather play those multiplayer. Now, if you try it and you're like, oh, this is okay. Well, then sure, that's okay. okay. But but try a couple of different genres. Try a couple of different things. Yeah. Um, t- don't go out and buy one if you don't need to, you know, or buy a cheap one. You know, you can get, oh gosh, I mean, you can get the Oniverse games for 15, 20 bucks yeah. online. Oh, you know? yeah. I mean, they're, they're super cheap, right? And so you can do any of that stuff if you want to, yeah. and you don't have to, yeah. right? Um, and so don't let the stigma of being a solo gamer stop you. Now, if you play it and you're just like, nope, still like the social aspect, that's fine. Yeah. That's totally fine. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. I find the games that I play on both sides of the spectrum, whether they're solo or multiplayer, fit, um, they, they, um, they, they help out different parts of my brain and parts yeah. of like what I get out of gaming. Okay. I love playing solo games, but, and here's, here. The, actually now that you think about it, here's the last thing I meant to bring this up earlier is that one of the things about solo gaming, honestly, is that I actually don't prefer solo gaming. Right. Okay. I love solo gaming, and I love playing in solo. Given the choice, you would always play a multiplayer game. G- given the choice, I would almost always choose multiplayer, right. okay. unless it's a unless it's a solitaire specific game, or yeah. it's just like, oh, I just want to try this out and see how it works. Right. If I'm given the option of sitting down and playing, and playing a three hour war game solo, or playing a three or playing the same three hour war game with multiple players, I'd rather play it with other okay. people. You know, Cuba Libre um, is one of the coin games. I love Cuba Libre. I've played it 30 plus times. Yep. It's about the Cuban Revolution. It's a coin game from GMT. Absolutely love this game, right? Um, I played it, and I would say out of all of my plays, I'd say 15 of my plays are solo, okay. and the other 15 are with multiple players. I'd much rather play it with more people, but I still enjoy it solo, right? Right, And so it still hits like 90% of what I need out of that game. But I would love to get that other ten percent to make it this perfect, complete package. Okay. But I'll still enjoy it, you know. Um, and so it's not that I only. And there, are, you know, there are people that are, oh, I only play games solo, and solo is the only way to do it, and this or right. whatever. I'm, I'm not that person. I love solo games, but I, if given the choice, I would always much rather okay. sit down around player with other people and play games. Okay. If, but once again, with the social anxiety and everything, it has to be people that I know yeah. or people that I feel comfortable yeah, yeah, with. Yeah. You know, I'm not there gonna... is there is one other aspect which we haven't mentioned, which I just thought of, is playing a solo game with multiple players. Oh, and Vicky oh. does this. So yes. this, this is a few years ago when I got Caverna, and I was like, "Oh, this is amazing! You've got to play this with me." And Vicky doesn't like playing games, generally speaking. Sure. And she was like, well, I'll play it with you, but let, let's just play the solo game, but together. Oh, uh-huh. And I'm like, well, what? And yeah. we did. Mm-hmm. And it was fine. Mm-hmm. So, we, yeah, it's playing a solo game. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it's, you know, the Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective games, they're it's solo basically games. Basically solo games. Yeah. Uh-huh. But you're playing it with more than one yeah. player. So, yeah. yeah, so multiple players playing the game together yep. as, as one yep. person. That That's a thing as well. And, mm-hmm. and that's... Whenever me and Vicky, I mean, we don't play many games together, but when we do play games together, 
Uh -huh. We would generally do it like that. We'd do a solo version of the game, but we'd both be making... Mm -hmm. I mean, when we played Seventh Continent, sure, we've each got our own character and we're going off and we're doing our own things, but we're playing it together. Yeah, we're, we're, oh, exactly. We're talking about who's going to go where and what's going to go where, and mm -hmm. we're, mm -hmm. you know, we're playing it yeah, and there's and, and there's there's not there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. You know, people do that all the time. Um, I I don't find enjoyment out of that. No, it has to be like something like Sherlock Holmes or an escape room or yeah. Seventh Continent. That, that's kind of that's kind of different, yeah. you know. But if I'm sitting there playing Glass Road by myself, I wouldn't say, "Hey, does somebody want to come over and play Glass Road?" The solo you wouldn't mode do that. Is, I, I, I I would do yeah, that because I yeah. want the. What should we do, Travis? Should we should we go here? And you'd be like, <laughs> oh yeah, but if we collect the, this this turn, we can do that. Next. I'll be like, oh right, yeah, that's yeah, a good idea. Yeah. That, that's and, what I want. And you know, I've 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 given um I've given Edward from Heavy Cardboard a hard time about this because they own a lot of solitaire war games, mm -hmm. um, but they just. They always play them cooperatively, right? And and part of it is the bookkeeping. I can totally understand that. You know, okay. there are charts that you have to reference. There's this and that. I totally understand that stuff, right? But then part of me just kind of goes, "Come on, man, you just just play it on your own. It's fine." You right. know, and and I wonder if part of it is the stigma, okay, of just playing a game on his own or not. And it might not be. You know, it might not I, be. I, I'm giving him a hard time a couple times. Okay, because like, what I'm thinking about is BGG Con one evening, Navajo Wars. Oh sure, yeah. But yeah, you wouldn't leave me to play that on my own. No, 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 no. And no, I wouldn't no. want to just sit and watch you play <laughs> it. We would play it. Yes. So that would be like a, you would be teaching me how to play the game. But actually, in my mind, we'd be playing that game. And I would together as a team. And once again, I would see that. I would see that a little differently because of. Because it is because I would be teaching it to you. Right. No, exactly. Now, if we both totally knew the rules and sat down, you I wouldn't I, do it. I, I probably more than likely wouldn't. Okay. You know. Um, I could don't get me wrong. I can see the fun of it, um, but I just I just don't know if I would. Okay, you well know, let's let's do that. Let's if if we've both got time at BGG Con one evening or something. Let's I don't know how long it takes to play. A, a few hours. Okay. Yeah, or we could play a short scenario and just see yeah, how it yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd I'd be down for that. So okay, cool. I love right. it. Let's do that. That's a date. Anyway, cool. right. So thank you very much for being of on course. the show. Uh, if you have any thought, if, if you have your, your own thoughts on solo games, this is me not talking to Travis, this is me talking to you listening. <laughs> so if you're listening to the show and you have your own thoughts on show, solo gaming that you want to share, mm -hmm. uh, please post about it on the Guild. I'll be putting a link to the Guild on the um, on the show notes of this on YouTube. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's Board Game Geek and it's Guild number 2258 and I'll be doing a thread on there for those, you know, what are your favourite solo games? Which games do you prefer playing solo to multiplayer? All of that kind of thing, join in the conversation. Um, and that's everything. So yeah, until next time, this has been the Gaming Rules Podcast with Travis from Low Play Account. Just a quick mention again about where people can find you online. A oh, sure thing. Uh, personally, you can find me at Travis D. Hill, either on Board Game Geek or on Twitter. Um, or you can also find Low Player Account Podcast at lowplayeraccount.com or at Low Player Account on Twitter, Instagram, all the social media stuff. And we are Guild 2223. There you go. So yeah, thank you very much for coming in the show. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. So that's the end of the show. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you are able to contribute on Board Game Geek, the guild number is 2258. Pop on there. Let me know what you thought about the show, but also what your thoughts are on solo games. Do you play solo games? Are you primarily a solo gamer? And what games do you really like playing? So just to wrap things up, thanks again to all of my Patreon supporters. Without them, this podcast wouldn't be possible. So if you are interested in supporting the show, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules and also thanks to games law the uk's largest specialist games retailer at gameslaw.com and as usual thanks very much to jason shaw from audionautics.com for the music used in this podcast gaming rules is a member of punchboard media where we all bring something to the table until next time take care and thanks for listening